I like to make a habit of making sure that my batteries are always stored at a consistent voltage. Now, I will be the first person to tell you, and I'm sure I've told a lot of my friends this, that batteries are always going to die because of physical impact. <laughs> before they die because of some chemistry issue every single time. That being said, in order to treat your batteries well, you want to keep them at storage charge as much as you can. And, you know, for every cell, you know, a full charge is 4.2, a high voltage charge is 4.35 or so. Um, and then a storage charge is around 3.8, 3.75 volts per cell. Now that doesn't change from a four cell to a six cell to a five cell, whatever. Um, but you, you want to make sure that they're always coming back to that voltage between flights. Now, some people will say, you know, it has to be like that overnight. Some people will say, hey, if you're not going to fly it for a week, don't worry about it. Or, uh, you know, or, or it could go out into the future further. Now, I fly a bunch of different voltages and I'll, I'm going to go out and I'm going to fly four cell on a, my Shendron Squirt. Or I'm going to go out and fly six cell on my racing quads. Or, you know, maybe I'm going to go five cell with my Racer 3. And like and so it might go weeks or days before I actually charge a certain battery um, of a certain chemistry. In addition, and a lot of people don't really pay too much attention to this one, but I think it's actually pretty important, is that when you travel by airline, you're required to have your batteries at that storage charge. Now, TSA doesn't know how to check that, and there's 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 no way to reinforce that, really. But it's I think it's very good to err on the safe side, and I almost always do, of making sure that, that, that those batteries are at storage charge for flights. Because, you know, I basically, my, my theory on it is, you know, if you have more energy stored up in the pack, if something does go wrong with it on the flight, um, on the airline, you know, you, you don't want there to be a bunch of potential energy stored in there. So I like to make sure that my batteries are at storage charge for travel. Now, you know, some people might say, oh, that's unnecessary. Some people just ignore it. I'm not going to point names, but I know a few people who do, and, and they just like, yeah, just go fly. So... You know, this, this this might not be a tip for every single person that's watching this. Some people might not really care quite as much. I find this a very important issue, um, so I invested in it. So this is the ISDT FD100 Smart Discharger. Um, across this row, you'll see that there is different uh, cell counts, so different voltages of batteries. And then across the bottom, it's different amp current draw ratings and once you plug in a battery you can change both of them and then in the middle there's this status indicator when the battery is discharging this will be blinking and when it's finished the whole thing will beep a whole bunch uh, tell you that it's done and then you'll um and then this green led will be solid lit um it is very loud um you can see that there's a big fan here in the back to get rid of to do all of that heat dissipation um and it just takes a normal xt60 in on this side there's also a connector where you can plug it into your computer change the settings so like if you wanted to change the you know your storage voltage to be a little bit higher a little bit lower you can you can plug it into the computer and change all that um and yeah so i mean it, it takes two to two to eight s on an XT60, obviously you could make some adapters for that if you wanted. Um, but you know, I like I like the ISDT series of products. I like how these um, have that uh, just consistency on using the XT60, um, and then it, it also comes with these little rubber uh, feet um, because like once this thing gets going, like this the fan in here is actually quite loud. Um, that's something to be aware of when you're using it as a discharger. So right here, I've got this China Hobby Line. I got this China Hobby Line four cell that I didn't get to fly this weekend that needs to be discharged anyway. So all I do is take it, plug it into the port in the back. Nothing actually happens when you plug it in until you hit a button. And then the LEDs come on. It's going to be really hard to see it with this light. Um, and you can cycle through. So right now I just set it to whoop, 4S there. And then I just leave it always pretty much at 6 amps. And then it just starts automatically. Now you can hear that it's actually pretty loud. I'm going to hold this up to the mic now. Um, but it will go through this whole charge and uh, get rid of the power of that battery. Here, let me try turning off this light and see if we can see those LEDs. Yeah, there you go. So you can use current here to change the amount of current draw that it uses. And then the cell count here. 
So you want to make sure that you have this set for whatever battery. But like if I plug this in as a five cell, it's going to yell at me because it knows that the voltage is not right there. So if I go back up to 4S, it'll start. And as you can see, this LED here in the middle will blink until it's done when it will be fully lit solid. So in conclusion, I think, you know, these might be a little bit more expensive than they probably need to be. I mean, and we, you know, discharging is obviously not like a sexy topic, right? It's, you know, just, just go fly your batteries. Well, we don't always have that chance, right? For example, I was out in Colorado this last weekend. We were doing some snowboarding and in between, I wanted to go do some long range packs. I charged up four batteries, only flew two before weather came in and then I wasn't able to get through the next two. So now, I can't go out into the eight inches of snow and fly. Well, I, I could do that, but I'm not going to do that <clears throat> and, and discharge those packs. So I just pull out my trusty ISDT, discharge the packs, and then I don't have to worry. So, you know, it, it it's, it's not going to be everyone's game to be using something like this, but I think it's something that's worth investigating um, and something that's worth having in your arsenal. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Kevin Lee, aka White Noise FPV. Uh, he was the one that introduced me to this particular product. Obviously there's dischargers and there's simpler ways to do it. Like you use a little light bulb or, or some sort of fan or whatever, or just, you know, arm your quad. I don't, I don't care how you do it. I just think that this form factor is just the perfect, the easiest way to get it done. Um, and you should definitely check it out. I'd love Love to have you comment below. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you think this is a dumb idea. Tell me if you think I'm overreacting or overthinking it. Um, and if you have your own DIY solution, if you have something that you know works even better than this, that maybe it's got a higher discharge. I don't know. Like I'm curious to hear your thoughts. So definitely leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I've included affiliate links below. Um, you know. Obviously, don't feel any pressure to go purchase anything or whatever. If you do, it supports this channel. It supports the growth of FPV in general. Um, but, you know, go ahead and check it out. If you're interested in purchasing these, definitely consider using those links. Um, otherwise, stay flying. Mm -hmm.